Hi there, in this video I'm going to make the frame to hold the spindle and the stepper motor. Well this should be a relatively simple affair and I'm just using up some um, sort of scrap that was left over from uh, when I made the engraving machine. Now uh, that's going to be the base and I'm going to uh, mill out some channels, uh, drill some holes. These are the sides that are going to hold the bearings. Now these bearing holes need to be perfectly aligned otherwise it won't run correctly and the idea is that um, these are going to be screwed onto the base like that. And I think I'll need um, something here to be able to put the motor on. So that's the bracket for the motor and I'm sort of uh, running out of um, sort of scrap metal now <laughs> um, so I'll probably use this so that will have to be sort of stuck onto the side somehow maybe something like that but I can work that up as I go along. Okay so I've uh, made sure that the vise is uh, exactly square with the table run a gauge along the inside uh, face of the jaw so it's spot on. Now I need to cut a couple of channels here. Uh, this stuff here is 15 millimeters in width. This is a 15 millimeter end mill. Um, so it doesn't really matter. It's not critical where these channels are um, but it is important to get them the same depth. So I'll probably take about 50 thou off. Now one thing I haven't bargained on was uh, this table not going back far enough. I think I've just about got it. Just double check that. Well in the end I took uh, one millimetre off, it's a shame I didn't move the vice that bit further up there but anyway you live and learn. Um, so what I'm going to do is with the DRO I'm going to uh, remember uh, this position here on the uh, x-axis uh, so I'll put that into memory then I'll move the table down here um, and cut this to exactly the same depth one millimetre and uh, then I'll get back to you. Okay, so um, unfortunately I can't find the centre of this piece using an edge finder because I can't get the edge finder on this end here. Um, so I'm just going to work off this top edge. So I've found the edge at the top here and I've moved the table in uh, 20 millimetres. This stock's 120 wide. So um, once I've centre drilled that, I'll go down here another 80 and centre drill there. Then I'll open it up with um, an M8 clear.
but it seems to be going okay. I've got some slots in here and uh, I've uh, recessed these so the bolts can go through. The heads will be sort of under uh, the bottom and uh, they seem to fit okay. So um, what I need to do is to replicate these holes uh, but I need to tap them M8 get them in the right positions obviously and um, to hold the motor I'm struggling for uh, for metal now I've got this other piece of scrap here <laughs> that's got my logo on it I was testing my um, engraver out so I think I'm going to have to attach that somehow and I'm thinking of pinning it sort of like that and then using some JB Weld to uh, secure it. I think that's the approach I'll take. Well this is one of the ends and I found the edge here then I use the edge finder on these two sides to find the centre. I've centre drilled so well I actually moved down here um, 20 millimetres centre drilled and then moved down 80 millimetres and centre drilled in the same way that I did the base so now I just need to drill and tap. So I've just put both the ends in this vise and I'm just going to skim this edge off here, just a few thou, just to make sure that they're spot on equal. So this is just a bit of a test fit, so I've bolted the sides to the base and I've put some witness marks on here to make sure that when I reassemble it it's in the, uh, you know, the correct position. And that looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good too. So what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to um, drill uh, a piece of scrap, something like that maybe, um, with the holes to attach these to, so that they're together. And then once I've got them aligned together, I can then um, drill through here and open up this hole on, on both pieces at the same time, and these will accommodate the bearings. So this is the uh, piece of scrap that I've used to drill and I'm going to bolt them together uh, against this angle. Oops. pretty good. So here I'm just using two float end mills to try and get this hole as big as possible. Big guns out now, this uh, ER40 collet chuck.
So this is one inch wide. Continue with uh, larger uh, two flu end mills, and, uh, and until I bottle it, and then I'll uh, <laughs> change my approach. So this is a one and a half inch uh, two flu end mill, and uh, I never thought I'd uh, actually need to use anything this big. Um, fortunately, my neighbour um, he was doing a job at a local engineering company, and they were uh, chucking out loads of gear, and uh, this is one of the uh, cutters that they uh, threw out um, in the skip so they, they said I could um, or my neighbour could uh, go through it and uh, have a rummage I've got loads of them <laughs> actually with this boring head. Well I've speeded the mill up to just over 600 rpm and I'm getting a better finish. I think uh, the hull's around about half a thou less than the bearing. So fingers crossed I've got it right. So I'll uh, split these two pieces up and uh, I'll try and press it in on the press. It's deburred and cleaned up so uh, we'll give it a try. Seems pretty good to me. Result. So will it fit? Oh, perfect. I mean, these need the lock tightening in place on the spindle, but. Very happy with that. Okay, so uh, what I've done is I've uh, drilled some holes here. I think the quarter inch diameter by 15 millimeters deep. And uh, these as well to match those. And the plan is to uh, use these pins here. I'll tap these pins in and use a bit of JB Weld as well. Tap it all together, leave it overnight and I should get, hopefully at the end of it, a really decent join and this bit here will be used to hold the uh, the bracket for the motor so I've just tap some holes here so it can be adjusted forwards and backwards if it's sideways adjustment I'm gonna to have to modify the bracket but uh, we'll see how we get on 
So this is just a bit of a test setup, and uh, that is a ten tooth gear, a ten tooth gear, and that is a thirty tooth gear. So a three to one ratio. And uh, Dave in Australia, Dave Tyshurst, he gives me some fantastic advice and tips. And he picked up on the fact that I mentioned in previous video that this shaft here is nineteen millimeters, but the inside of the bearing is three quarters of an inch. So there's two thou difference, so the, 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 the shaft is two thou less than the inside of the bearing, so it's potentially it's going to slip. And uh, I was going to use Loctite, um, which is a bit permanent. Now Dave came up with a fantastic suggestion, and that is, what you can do is, you can, if you put the shaft on a flat surface, you can use the edge of a file in the area where it's going to slip into the bearing and uh, you can create a little bit of a rasp on it and that'll take up the you know the few thou that you're, you're needing alternatively what you can do is you can yeah, lightly center punch say in four places at 90 degrees and that again will just just give you that little bit extra and I was really going to go with that option um, but then it occurred to me that this shaft has got to go through this bearing first before it hits this bearing and I think if I put a rasp on this area here, then it's going to be sort of taken off when it gets to this one here, when it goes through this one, I think. Um, I don't know, but uh, we'll, I'll tell you what, we'll give it a try. <laughs> so this is the idea. This is silver steel, so it's a bit hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, doing so well there. I'm a bit reluctant. I'm at to uh, use a centre punch. I tell you what, I'll, I'll try centre punching it off camera. And uh, we'll see how we get on. I'll get back to you. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. So I've uh, just put some little marks on there, punch marks. So sort of quite fine. So sort of on both areas. It just raises it a little bit, so uh, we'll give it a try. Oh, so I've definitely got resistance there. Oops. That's gone through, it hasn't knocked the bearing out, which is good. It's a bit more of a heavier clout, but I'll do that off camera. Oh, cheers, Dave. That seemed to work a treat. <laughs> um, and the advantage of this method is that uh, I can knock it out if I, ne if I ever need to, as opposed to if I'd have used the Loctite 638. That's pretty permanent stuff, so uh, the only way of uh, removing it would be to apply heat. Um, but anyway, seemed to have got a result there. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure that my wiring is correct uh, between sort of the uh, stepper motor and the stepper driver and the Arduino. So I've um, I've got a stepper online DM542T version four driver, and uh, on the stepper online website there's some a uh, bit of Arduino test code that I've downloaded onto the board and um, there's also a schematic so I've wired it up based on the schematic I'll show you a quick uh, picture of the schematic and I'll provide a link to that particular page
Now I've modified the code so it's sending out 600 pulses, uh, one pulse every 500 microseconds, and um, the the attachment um, has got a three to one ratio. So effectively, if you send 600 pulses to this, it'll turn it one full revolution. And the stepper motor I've got is from Who's Nest and it's an EMA 23 175 200. So 200 steps in that stepper motor. So 3 multiplied by 200 is 600. So when we run this, we should go full revolution. It's going backwards and forwards. I think my pulley wheel's a bit loose, so I need to sort that out. Uh, but basic functionality is there, so I'm happy with that. And also, uh, I captured the signal coming out of the uh, pull plus. And uh, if you measure that signal, it is 500 microseconds. So, pretty happy so far. And the wiring I've got to this Ousnest motor, which is probably quite important, um, it goes, obviously got power going in, but uh, it goes red, green, yellow, blue. So there's another simple test. What I decided to do is to uh, write a very simple Arduino program. Uh, for 20 teeth and uh, it's all hard coded so it's not ideal uh, but uh, we'll just uh, run it and turn the scope on and see what the output is So I've just captured that and uh, believe me um, I've counted that and I get a pulse going out uh, for every 20 pulses coming in. So I think I'm just going to hook that up to the um, stepper driver just to see what happens. Well I've hooked uh, the Arduino uh, up to the uh, stepper motor driver um, running my code. So for 20 turns of this, I should get one turn of that. It's a bit crude, but one, two, it's going round, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Well, it's gone to the bottom, so it's uh, definitely twenty revolutions uh, of that to one revolution of that. So that looks pretty good. And running under its own steam. seem to work out okay and uh, I'm really happy with the uh, spindle attachment and thanks to Dave in Australia for uh, providing me with that fantastic tip of uh, adding a few thou onto uh, the spindle. It's, uh, it's quite easy to remove material but sometimes quite difficult to add it so uh, really appreciate that tip. And also, I'll also put a link to Dave's YouTube channel uh, in my video description because they've got loads of hints and tips which are really really useful. Um, now I was wanting to uh, show uh, me running Andy's machine code um, for the hobber uh, but unfortunately uh, I'm hitting some issues um, which I can't really bottom out at the moment. I don't really know what's going on uh, but they seem to be quite random so I need to do some more work on that. 
And uh, the other issue I've got is um, I'm going to find it difficult to demonstrate this hobbing machine because I've not got a hobber. <laughs> um, I know you can make them, but uh, it's probably beyond me. Uh, but if there's anybody out there who's got an old hob that they want to get rid of, um, rather than throw it in the bin, um, you can throw it my way. And uh, if there's any uh, postage costs associated with it, um, I'll, uh, I'll obviously reimburse them for that. But anyway, in the meantime, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later. Oh, and the fantastic news is the two gear cutters I was after have arrived from uh, Douglas in Pennsylvania. So I can't thank Douglas enough for uh, digging me out of a big hole on that one. Um, so hopefully in the not so distant future I'll be able to uh, start work again on the Jury Howell B-Twin.